Hello, everyone. We're so excited that you are here. My name is Kira Oliver. I do a lot of things here at the spa, and today I'm actually going to be the host of our event. So thank you so much for being here. We also want to thank the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation. Thank you so much for helping make this possible today. You are here for our Mother's Day cooking event, and I must say, happy Mother's Day. So we hope that you will take this information and you will use it for your own Mother's Day or maybe a special mother you have in mind, whatever it is that you choose to celebrate. But you're probably wondering, or hopefully you may already know, who is here with me. So I have Executive Chef Christopher House. Say Hi, hello. everyone. Hi, everyone. And this is Alexandra Dusenberry. She is our nutritionist here. Hello. This is a very special day because not only are we celebrating mothers, but we are also going to be sharing with you an amazing meal that you can take, be it an elegant picnic or an elegant meal at home, under candlelight, whatever you choose. But you're also going to get some amazing tips about nutrition. Everything we prepare here has nutritional value, and we love that. And it's pretty amazing how you can get that information and have a great experience. Before I go any further, I want to make sure you guys can hear us. So you are muted, but can you hear us? Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> All right. All right. It looks like if you cannot hear us, you might want to double check that you have joined us with your computer audio. If you're having some sort of trouble, send us a message in the chat. So it seems some of you have found the chat feature already, and this is super important today because if you have a question, we're going to want you to write it in the chat. We have a lot of people that are going to be on today. We may, oh, thank you, Lisa, for telling us that. Thank you, Randall. Thank you so much. <laughs> So today, we may not be able to get to all the questions, but we sure will try. So if you have a question along the way, just simply type it in that chat. So when, if you're not sure where that is, it should be at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a little chat bubble. And if you just type into that, or if you click on that, you'll have an opportunity to type some questions in for us. And we will try to answer those throughout or at the end. So we'll just see kind of how that goes. Now, there is one thing that we have to start with. Are you guys ready? Okay, we have to start with a special cocktail. Now, I especially love this cocktail, and you want to know why? Chef, do you know why? I know why. You know why? Yeah. You know why? I don't know why. Okay, <laughs> don't tell them, because I'm going to tell them. Okay, I said my name is Kira, and our cocktail today is a Kier cocktail, and that's probably the closest to my name I will ever get <laughs> for a cocktail, unless I name my own cocktail. So... Anyway, I'm excited about that. So with the cocktail, you're going to want this cassis, right? So chef, this is like a, a black currant. Uh, can you tell us about it? A little sure. Bit? It's a black currant liqueur. It's very famous. It's well known from the Dijon region of France. It's like a sweet liqueur and paired up with a white wine or champagne. It makes a pre, a perfect pre-dinner drink. Okay. So something that the chef taught me about this cocktail is that the amount of this that you put in versus the wine is going to make a difference in how sweet it is. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here. All right. You think that's good? Perfect. Okay. All right. And then <laughs> we're going to add in our own wine here. So this is a Sauvignon Blanc from our very own vineyards. You can order this if you guys want to try it out. And so the chef told me the tip, like I said before, the lighter this gets, the less sweet it's going to be. And that looks about right to me. That's a beautiful right? shade. Okay. So I would like to ask all of you, whether you're having water or a cocktail right now, let's raise a toast to this wonderful Mother's Day celebration. <laughs> Cheers. Mmm, delish. Thank you so much. Okay. It is time to move on into this cooking event. So, Chef, will you get us started? I certainly will. Thank you so much uh, for that uh, great introduction, Kara. First, we're going to start off with, as we do with everything here at Calavi, is we're going to start off with a light summer uh, fruit and vegetable skewer that can also substitute as, uh, uh, as a salad. So we're going to have a watermelon, cucumber, and tomato skewer with a vanilla honey gastrique. 
Uh, and you can see here, I have my watermelon that's coming into season right now. We like to use hothouse or English cucumbers. And then I have some uh, beautiful sun gold currant tomatoes that are just getting right into season, right into flavor right now. Uh, a couple of interesting things about uh, using uh, your knives at home. It's, it's great to have your basic knife skills. The main thing to remember is keep those five fingers together. And then uh, when you're using your knife blade, keeping that knife blade right up against your fingers. So we're gonna go ahead and just make a nice slice here with the cucumber and getting it ready. You can see the knife blades right up against my fingers. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our watermelon and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut right against that rind. And I'm just gonna create some little cubes here that I'm gonna skewer with. And then we've got our sun gold tomatoes. And then I've also got some uh, mint here. And basically uh, I have some beautifully diced uh, cucumber and tomatoes and uh, uh, watermelon here. And I've got some really neat knotted bamboo skewers and some mint. And basically what we're gonna do is just put a, a piece of the uh, current tomato, the English cucumber, and then the watermelon and build our skewer. Uh, there's no real way to do it, whatever way that suits you, whatever your style is, but we're just gonna start off with the watermelon cube, then put a little uh, sprig of my mint on there. Then I'm gonna put a little of the uh, cucumber skewer on, a little mint again, and then one of the current tomatoes, and then one of the uh, mint skewers again. And then basically we can make it as big and small as we like, but we'll also make it a square round. You can leave the cucumber peeled or unpeeled. Um, again, it's a lot of fun. It's a really sweet and easy. Uh, since the watermelon and cucumber is about 75% water, it's a great hydrating uh, salad or appetizer, uh, whatever way you like to use it for. Perfect as it's getting warm. And now Chef, I wanted to just note to everyone, Obviously, as he said, you can do this however you want, but is this where you start from in terms of making it square? Indeed. Uh, with the English cucumber, uh, one of the things we like about that is it's really adaptable, whether you want to leave it peeled or unpeeled, even leaving it round, or being chefs, we like everything uniform, so we went ahead and did a dice on the watermelon and on the cucumber. But again, it really comes down to follow the recipe, but then use your own style, whatever you feel like for the moment. Uh, we're all chefs and chefettes at heart. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and take, uh, I've also got a vanilla honey gastrique we're gonna make. I have a little honey, a little white wine vinegar, and a little vanilla bean. And basically I'm just gonna put them into my pan, which is quite hot. That's always the key to good cooking is making sure your pan is hot. And basically I'm gonna combine the vanilla, the honey and the vinegar and bring them up to a boil and make a little syrup. Then afterwards, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the syrup, the vanilla honey gastrique right over the, uh, right over the um, uh, cucumber, tomato and uh, watermelon skewer. So that'll just take a minute. And then I'm gonna get my plate ready. I basically have my um, a little bit of mixed greens on here. And I have my skewer, and I think we'll make one more real quick. And so while you are doing that, I just want to talk about nutrition for a second. Absolutely. Okay. So again, I'm kind of obsessed right now with cucumber because it's getting warmer and the watermelon too. But let's talk about the benefits of skin on versus skin off for the cucumber. Yeah. So this goes for pretty much any fruit and veggie. If you can leave the skin on, there's going to be a lot of nutrition coming from that. So yes, beautiful to have the skin off, but if you can, and you like to eat it with the skin on, it's going to provide a lot more fiber for you as well. So the key for that skin, lots of fiber content. Okay. I love that. And then watermelon, as we were talking about uh, too, it's very hydrating. Yes. This is a very hydrating dish. Watermelon is a great source of potassium. So those electrolytes, especially in the summer, when we need to cool down and refresh after being out in the hot sun. Maybe we did a little workout. Watermelon's a great food to incorporate to get your electrolytes balanced. Okay. And Chef, let us know when you're ready because we've got more nutrition we can talk about. Um, but we also have the tomatoes. And what I love is all the color that's happening here. And you guys, like, you love color, right? Yes. The rainbow? The, eat the rainbow. The more color you can get on your plate, the better. 
because every single color that we see on our plates in terms of fruits and veggies has a different spectrum of nutrients. So the reds, the greens, the blues, the purples, they all provide different types of antioxidants, vitamins, minerals. So the best key to optimizing your health is to get as many colors on your plate throughout the week as possible. I love that. Now we do have a question that's coming up and I think it's a really good time chef because it's about this vanilla mixture. Mm -hmm. So as you're working with that, the question is what are the ratios for the vanilla mixture? Now, obviously we do have the recipes in the cookbook, but can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Uh, again, a lot of the fun with cooking is the recipe really is follow the recipe. You can't go wrong. However, uh, depending on your own taste also, whether you like it a little more acidic with the extra vinegar in there, or if you like it a little sweeter, uh, also depending on your, how the ripeness of your watermelon and cucumber, that you may want it more sweeter. I love vanilla. We use a Madagascar vanilla here. Oh, I can smell it. And, and so it, it really is kind of like a sweet, sour, little gastric of just a little drizzle that we're just going to just dr drizzle on top of the skewers just to enhance that natural flavor, the combination of the watermelon, the cucumber, the tomato together, and a bit of greens. And again, uh, whether you eat it as a skewer, as an appetizer, or go ahead and just slide the skewer right off and eat it as a salad, you have that vanilla, honey, uh, uh, vinegar, gastrique, and then of course, uh, the nice greens to go with that, and uh, all those wonderful hydrating fruits and vegetables. I think that also the here would go nicely with this, or would you agree that even the Sauvignon Blanc would go nicely? Would go perfectly with that. A nice, crisp, clear Sauvignon Blanc uh, with the fruits, a wonderful way to uh, start uh, your meal and start the night with the care. And then uh, if you've got some micro flowers in your gardens, as we do here with our wonderful gardeners that we have here at Calavi, uh, we have some tangerine uh, uh, micro flowers here that we're going to just put on top and just go ahead and finish off that presentation. And they're tangerine, like that's the color. That's why you're going to that. And Indeed. I know we grow a ton of on property, right? Indeed. We, we, we have wonderful gardeners here at uh, Calavi. We have a holistic, organic approach to our gardens. We really believe in biodiversity and eco-friendly that what we put into the ground and what we take out work hand in hand. We have a wonderful, uh, two wonderful gardeners here who work really hard to keep uh, our gardens natural, uh, keep uh, the uh, the bunnies and the bugs and uh, everything else in, uh, in the area uh, working to help keep our gardens working better also. Yeah, that's wonderful. Even we have our own bees. We have our own bees. Uh, the bees are actually uh, 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 buzzing around and happy right now. We're hoping in another month or so we'll be uh, producing our own honey for the upcoming season, which we'll have in our retail store. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Okay, so Alexandra, yes. let's talk more about nutrition because we didn't finish here. Right. And we've got some amazing mixed greens going on. Absolutely. The idea of the mint. Can you talk more? Totally. So I love that this mint is incorporated into our starter. Mint is known to be really good for promoting digestion. So starting your meal off with a little bit of mint is going to kickstart that process. Uh, looking at all these different colors, you're talking about the color spectrum. New research is coming out that we need about 30 different colors or 30, pardon me, 30 different fruits and veggies throughout the week to help wow. optimize our microbiome, our good gut bacteria. So even looking at this plate right now, we're already starting to incorporate several different plants from the mint and the watermelon, the cucumber, the green. So it actually is not too intimidating if we really start to include a variety to get all these different plants we need. I mean, we look at, you know, the cucumber and the watermelon being so hydrating. This is a really great dish as an appetizer to help fill you up without being too indulgent. So you're still able to enjoy the rest of your meal. Right. Okay. So two things you mentioned, hydrating, we said a couple of times, that's also going to hydrate like your skin, right? Absolutely. So really, really great for hydrating full body skin's going to be useful and plump. Also really great sources of vitamin C. So you're going to have that collagen production that we want to keep optimal through our whole lives. It starts to slow down as we age. So keeping your vitamin C intake up is super important. Okay. And then uh, microbiome, can mm -hmm. you ex just define that yes. just for our audience? Yes. So the microbiome, we all have one in our gut. Um, basically this collection of bacteria that serves so many purposes from regulating our mood to helping with digestion 
to reducing anxiety and depression, uh, keeping our immune system boosted. About 80% of our immune system is in our guts. So especially now when we're all concerned about keeping our immune system up, mm -hmm. focusing on that gut health is going to be one of the best ways to support your immune system. Okay. I love that. Chef, are you ready to move on? I'm ready for you guys are. I, I learn something new every day. Um, uh, hanging out with uh, Kira and uh, Alexandra uh, for our next course. Really excited about this. One of the things I think we do really well here at Calabi is each course uh, sets up the next course. Every meal is actually planned to work together for a greater effect. We really have a lot of fun of a, a nice fresh fruit and vegetable. And then for our next course, of course, we're gonna be serving a uh, roasted or king salmon with romesco sauce, the skillet zucchini and corn. So again, each course and the seasonality of our food, we really have a lot of fun with. It really is about uh, uh, producing the best quality uh, food, but also nutritionally enhanced food that we really have a lot of fun with. So our Aura King salmon that we get in, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Havens are all about just bringing in only the best product. The Aura King salmon is a sashimi grade fish. It's sustainable, it's farm raised. It comes from New Zealand. It's just an absolutely beautiful fish. As all our uh, fish products are, they're sashimi grade. Our beef is only a Wagyu beef, which is the highest quality beef you can get in the world. So when uh, our guests come to Calabi, it is all about the best and it's about seasonality. So the fun part of what we'll do next is uh, we've got our salmon here and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a uh, little uh, uh, zucchini and uh, corn uh, saute here. You can see I have the globe squash in, which are in season right now, and really a lot of fun. And we've got a little bit of corn we're gonna use also. Um, I love, uh, I'm not sure ladies, if you had ever seen the, the globe uh, zucchini no, and so squash cute. before. Um, yeah, chefs wouldn't use that word, but that <laughs> works. That works, we'll, call, we'll go with cute. Again, uh, the trick, make sure you keep that knife right up against your fingers. And we're just gonna do a nice little quick fun dice with it. Again, your food, uh, keep it simple. Really great food isn't about uh, big intense recipes and too much. It's really about keeping the food simple and letting, uh, uh, letting the food speak for itself. Um, uh, here again, it's all about seasonality, what's fresh, what's in season right now, what's the most fun to work with. A little bit of salmon and some corn and squash, you can't go wrong with that. Now, in terms of seasonality, I know we grow a lot here, mm -hmm. but we do also source from some places, uh, obviously the best. What would you recommend for our audience in terms of how to make sure they're getting the best? Where should they go? Uh, there was a French food philosopher. Oh, they yeah. <laughs> There was a uh, French food philosopher, Briat Savarin, who wrote 100 years ago, you are what you eat. And that is absolutely true, for sure. Uh, one of the things um, I, I love about food is uh, you get what you pay for, so to speak. So to spend a little money on, on getting the best product uh, definitely is important. Um, one of the things we do here, I think at uh, Calabi that I love the best is we have so many local farmers, local organic farmers. We deal directly with them. We actually get our food, um, uh, food delivered daily, our fresh produce, fresh fruit, fresh veg, our fish is all delivered daily. It's all about freshness and seasonality. Again, our local farmers just do a beautiful job with the microclimates in the area. We're close to the ocean. We're in the high desert here. So it really gives us a wonderful growing environment here for sure. So we have a lot of fun uh, working with the local farmers. Um, Everybody loves peeling corn on the cob, I'm sure, or uh, I like to just stand it up um, vertical. <laughs> I had to works. think about that for a minute. <laughs> and I really just like to run my knife right down the side of the cob and go ahead and just peel that corn right off. And that's just as easy as you can. I also like to take the flat of my knife and give it a little scrape. And I actually get the milk from the corn out of it and really increase that flavor. And I'm sure uh, the nutrients in there also. So when I go to saute this, I really have just a beautiful, really almost sweet, milky corn. And again, we're gonna saute this up and saute our fish also. The main thing to remember when you're sauteing at home is make sure that pan is hot. Uh, when we cook here at Calabi, everything is with grapeseed oil. We love the grapeseed oil because it's a uh, high smoke temperature oil. It's a beautiful, fresh, ambient taste. It doesn't really take over the taste of uh, whatever you're cooking. So we make sure we get our pan on there. 
we turn the heat right up on it. We want to get those pans nice and hot. Uh, again, the grapeseed oil with that high smoke temperature is just wonderful to work with. Great middle taste, doesn't dominate. And I'm just going to put just about half a tablespoon in each pan and let them get hot. Once my oil starts to smoke, then I know I'm ready to cook. A lot of time, whether you're making a beautiful or a king salmon or even a pancake at home and it starts to stick on the pan, uh, you've got to be patient. And let that pan get a little warmer. Yeah. And with grapeseed oil, maybe you could talk about that a little bit, because I know there are different um, schools of thought with grapeseed oil. And, and Alexander, you could even touch on that, too, uh, in terms of I know we get the best quality in that high smoke. Point. Am I saying that right? Um, nice that point. helps with great cooking, but how do we make sure we're getting the right quality, the right grapeseed oil? Yes. Yeah, so organic, if you can, is going to be one of the good tips with the grapeseed oil. And in terms of cooking oils, it's really, really smart to make sure that you are using the appropriate type of oil for this type of cooking you're doing. So chef's using this, it's got a high smoke point, which means it's not going to oxidize. We don't want to oxidize and damage those oils because that's creating free radicals, which we want to avoid, you know, antioxidant content is very important. So let's keep it up and elevated in our foods. Let's not smoke the olive oil to oblivion and end up oxidizing all those great nutrients. So if we can stick to the high heat oils, like grapeseed oil for high heat cooking, and then something like olive oil, which has a little bit lower smoke point, more for drizzling and making salad dressings and things like that, because we want to keep that nutrient content up and not just blaze it all away with the heat. Okay. Blaze away. I like that. <laughs> wow. That, that's a new uh, chef term, I think. Uh, one of the things we like to do too, a uh, couple of tricks here. Uh, I love using shallots. Shallots is part of the uh, allium family, the uh, um, onion family, the lily family. Uh, again, keep those fingers tight, uh, the blade right against it. And then you're just going to do your quick little slice on the shallot there. We're going to make a little cross cut. And then go ahead and we're going to have our fine minced shallot. And then on the garlic, uh, one of the tricks we like to do there to make it easier uh, is I like to lay my blade flat, give it a quick punch, yeah. and then my garlic, a little haya, is definitely appropriate. See, that was the opposite of cute. <laughs> <laughs> I still like the blazing though. That was the best blazing part. Blazing cute, sure. haya. And we're seeing people commenting on it. really appreciating the knife tips, Jeff. So thank you. Indeed, my pleasure for sure. Um, you can see we've got a nice uh, hot pan going here. That oil is nice and hot. One of the greatest chefs of the last hundred years was uh, Joel Robichon. His main mantra when you cook is seasoning your food before and after you cook it. Uh, with the salmon, uh, we like to uh, use a little white pepper. If I use black pepper, it looks like it's a little bit dirty. But if I use just a little white pepper, I'm going to get that nice seasoning on there. Keep your hand high when you season. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to season that before and after we cook it. When you go to lay it into the pan, uh, make sure you lay it away from you so when it splashes up, it doesn't splash uh, any of your friend or family members. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and lay that down. And you can see already the protein is sitting right up. We're going to get a beautiful caramelization off of that. Now, you have taken the skin off of one side of the salmon. Is that right? Right. Okay. Yeah. One of the things I like to do, uh, uh, fish is probably my favorite thing to cook. I actually like keeping the skin on my fish when I cook at home. But uh, here at Calabi, a uh, few too many calories out with that fish fat and fish skin. So we make sure we pull that off. Give it but, to the cats. Yeah, give it to the cat. We don't have any cats here. Um, I have a, a, a fish spatula, a Paltex here. This is wonderful for cooking delicate or finer things. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just flip that right over. And you can Ooh. see we just have a real pretty little finish on the salmon there. And then I'm going to put that in the oven and roast it just for a minute or two. So I have a nice, rich, uh, uh, nice, rich and not overdone salmon. Now, Steph, how far, and I sometimes you watch the, the side of the salmon and how, you know, like it's, do you know what I'm talking about? Like sure. in terms of how long you cook it? Yeah, that's a great point. Actually, when, you know, as always, when you're cooking your meat or fish, so one thing we like doing is cooking in the oven because we have that hot air blowing around. Now on the fish, as it starts to cook, uh, as the inside of it gets warmer, the fat in the fish will actually start to force itself out the side and you'll see little white fat globules forming on the outside. That's how you know when your fish is done. 
it should be soft, but not too firm, but it should still have a nice rich flavor for sure. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, saute our uh, corn and uh, uh, zucchini and squash. I've got my uh, shallots and uh, onions there. I'm gonna give them what we call a quick sweat. I'm gonna cook them without color. I think we're making popcorn here, later. <laughs> We do have great popcorn here. <laughs> <laughs> we do have great popcorn here. So we're going to go ahead and sweat our uh, shallots and uh, uh, shallots and uh, garlic. Then I'm going to go ahead and add the corn and add my zucchini. When are they going to allow uh, Zoom? When will they have the smells come through Zoom? Because you guys yeah. smell so good in here. And that's the fun part about cooking is uh, everybody enjoys what's better than good food, good friends, good family, good wine. Good wine. <laughs> yeah. These are the best times of our lives for sure. Now, when you're sauteing at home, a lot of people are very intimidated by the uh, uh, by the tossing. Basically, all you're doing with your hand is going in a circular motion. You really just want to let that uh, hand do the work for you where the, you can see the corn and zucchini, the shallot and garlic just going around. And that's really just letting the pan do all the work for you. And then to the miracle of Calabee, I've got a piece of salmon here that I just finished off a little earlier. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn that off because of the residual feed. I know it, it's gonna go ahead and continue to cook a little more. I've got a little chopped cilantro that I'm gonna add here. And then you always want to add your fresh herbs right at the end. If you add them too soon, they'll kind of cook out and lose all those good nutrients, all that good fresh flavor. And we want as much fresh as we can get, right? Yeah. And more nutrients, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely all about the freshness, about cooking fast, uh, cooking with speed. And then the fun part is always is the presentation. I never get tired of plating up uh, to a chef that plate is our canvas. This is how we uh, express ourselves here. So one of the things I like to do, uh, I tend to be a center of the plate chef. I like starting in the center and working out. Uh, I like uh, uh, getting my food on the plate with a spoon. A lot of people might use spatulas, but I like using uh, my chef spoon here that I've had for years. I think that popcorn is getting ready to pop. <laughs> and, and what I want to throw in here, and I think you said this earlier perhaps, but Patience, right? Okay, so the spoon is a more patient tool yeah. that you're getting it the way presented the way you want. Yeah, the spoon really allows you to direct where you want the food to go. And then we're going to go ahead and just put our salmon right on top with that. Oh, beautiful. And as you can see, you really let the food uh, talk and uh, uh, express itself right there. Uh, so we've got our salmon and our little bit of uh, uh, corn there. And then we actually have one of the things we're going to serve with this is a romescu sauce. Uh, I love the romescu sauce because it's so versatile. Um, I have the red bell pepper and the tomato. I have some bread, some chili, some vinegar and nuts, uh, some slivered almonds. And uh, because of time constraints, we're going to do the magic of Calabi once again. And we're going to roast our tomato and pepper till they're just a little wrinkled. I'm going to soak my chilies in the vinegar and toast the bread. And then basically what I'm going to do with my food processor is I'm going to go ahead and put all these ingredients together, go ahead and puree them up. And then I have my romescu sauce. So it's a really interesting sauce with the tomato, the chili, the vinegar, the chili flakes, the almonds and the bread pureed all together. So it's really kind of an everything sauce that whether it's salmon or pork or fish, it really goes well with everything. So Chef, can you do me, a, well, the, for the audience, can you talk a little bit about the process of the roasting? Uh, how do you roast the tomato and, and, and the pepper? You know, a couple of the specifics here. Absolutely. Uh, as you can tell by the tomato and the uh, pepper here, um, you know, they're nice and clean and fresh and bright. What we're going to do is just toss them with a little olive oil and salt and pepper. And what we want to do is roast them in the oven. I actually want to caramelize them. I want to bring the natural sugars out. I want to take the acidity, the rawness mm -hmm. of the tomato or the pepper. And uh, really then, so when I go to puree them, instead of having just a raw product, high acid, uh, not as much flavor, the natural sugar in the tomato and the pepper combined with the slivered almonds, the bread, the chili, 
the flavors uh, pureed together, just make a wonderful sauce that really goes well with everything. Okay, perfect. And then just backing up again. Mm -hmm. So once you've done that, because I see you, you take the whole, you know, you wash it or whatever you do, and mm -hmm. then add a couple of maybe salt and pepper, did you say? Salt and pepper okay. and a little olive oil, yeah. A little olive oil. Um, and then you just roast it whole. Mm -hmm. And then you're putting all of these ingredients into the food processor? Yeah, if you have a Roboku, a food processor, food processor, if you have a Vitamixer or even your margarita blender, you're just going to take all the roasted items. Uh, put them right together in the pure, uh, puree mode, hit the button and just puree it up. And then you get that nice, beautiful, elegant sauce that's got the combination of the vegetables, the bread, the nuts, the vinegar, the chili. It just really makes a great everything sauce. Perfect. So have everything measured out, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Throw it in. You should be fine. And then how do, how do they know the consistency? Like when do you stop the food processor? One of the things that's fun about cooking, again, the recipe is your guideline. But again, it comes down to individual taste. The Romescu for me, I like it, the traditional Spanish style, big, thick, heavy macho sauce. So you're almost kind of dipping your fish into it uh, like you would a tartar sauce, perhaps. Uh, sometimes though too, I like pureeing it out, adding a little more water to it or a little more uh, uh, vinegar to it. So I have more of a puree and more of a sauce that I may just lay out on the plate with the vegetables and the fish on top. So it really comes down to what's your mode, what's your style. And again, as always, it's having fun with the food. The recipe is a guideline, but it isn't a uh, wherewithal, that's for sure. Okay, and there's a question seeds and all or do you de-seed de is that great, the word <laughs> great great question now you can see by the pepper here we've got this roasted and if i just give it a little squeeze i can literally just pull the stem out and then i can just pull the skin off you see how the skin just pulls right off uh and then i can also just squeeze the uh seeds right out of the uh, pepper so that when I go to puree it, I have the stem out, I have the skin off, I have the seeds out, and it's really just that simple. Okay, and then there was there's a question about vinegar in the dressing, uh, vinegar in the dressing and sauce, both white vinegar. Uh, in in the Romescu, there is uh, in the sautéed corn and zucchini, there's not. But there was a little vinegar in the uh, gastric and the vanilla honey gastric. Okay. There was a little bit of vinegar in there. Uh, chefs love to use acids in our cooking uh, and acid being whether it's lemon juice or lime juice or whether it's our vinegars. Uh, acids in the foods and the sauces and soups tend to brighten up your flavors. The acid can take a, a regular old tomato sauce or pepper soup uh, to a whole new level. Acid is your best friend. So sometimes if your food tastes a little flat, go ahead and Add a little vinegar or a little fresh lemon or lime juice to it. And it'll really brighten up your flavors. I love that tip. And then the temperature in the oven for roasting and how long? Uh, 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 here at uh, Calavi, we have big macho uh, stoves and ovens. Macho they, is the word now. That's macho, that twice. If you have a macho stove or oven. So we, uh, we run ours because we use them so much. We have so much food going in now, feeding a lot of people. We keep our gas ovens right around 400 degrees. If you have a gas oven at home, I'd go 350. If you have an uh, electric oven, if those are even still around anymore, uh, I would definitely run that at about 400 degrees. But because our ovens are so powerful, we go 400, but they're opening and closing co constantly for sure. Okay, so get but get it to that temperature and then put it in for how long? Uh, absolutely, you're going to put those peppers and uh, tomatoes in there. You know, it can really vary on temperature and time. You want to look at them till they just start to get wrinkled, get a little color on them. Then you can go ahead and pull them right out. But you're probably right around the 10 or 15 minute mark, not really that long. Okay, just when the kitchen starts smelling really good. Yeah. Or is there a rule when you smell something, it's already burnt? Okay, no, 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 that's that. actually a wonderful, I think chefs were constantly thinking about our food while we're cooking and we can look at a steak or piece of fish and tell when it's done. But certainly as we're working, we can smell when things are done. You can smell that onion, tomato, pepper when it's just about done and just about ready to go. Uh, but uh, sometimes too, even the chef forgets. Then when it's burning, then we know it's done for sure. <laughs> Okay. All right. So anything else you want to include before I go to nutrition? Oh, I do have a question about the corn. Yeah. I'm a girl from Tennessee and I remember shucking corn <laughs> a long time ago and <laughs> mom and mom and dad would have the corn, you know, and they would, it was really good corn. It was mm -hmm. very nice and sweet. So how do you make sure you're getting a good 
um, common corn. You know, what's funny is with a lot of times when you go to the produce sections and all supermarket, supermarkets now have huge produce sections, you know, really when you go up, there's no real secret, but go up and, and uh, I tend to use my smell the most. Uh, if I go up to a cantaloupe or a honeydew and smell it, does it smell fresh? Does it just smell like a cantaloupe so or honeydew? Those people are not crazy. In they are not like crazy. That is a real thing. The ones that are shaking it and talking to it though, I might steer away <laughs> okay. from for sure. For sure. Uh, corn, though, is one of the few things that really, when you reach uh, uh, down, and usually, obviously, all the stalks are still on the green leaves, but I, I like to use my thumbnail and just give it a little push. Mm -hmm. And if there's a little give and it's kind of soft and tender, I know my corn is a little more ripe versus if there's really no give to it, it might not be quite in season yet, for sure. Okay. okay. This looks beautiful. So let's talk about some nutrition here. I mean, we got a lot going on. Um, maybe we start with the vegetables yeah. on the plate first. Absolutely. So love that we're using these seasonal veggies on our plate. The zucchini and the corn, so great for spring and summer. That's one of the keys to really making sure you're getting those fresh produce on your plate. Try to keep it seasonal as much as you can. So that's a great way to highlight our seasonal produce. And backing up, if it's not seasonal, but it's in the store, does that mean, oh, it could have come from somewhere else where it is seasonal, which means the longer it takes to get there, the, the, you're losing nutritional value, right? Correct. Yes. So that is definitely something to be mindful of. If you're seeing it in the store and it's the dead of winter, you have to wonder, this is definitely coming from a different hemisphere or at least a completely different region to where we're located. And it does take transit time to get those foods to the store and all of the time that it takes is just time for those fresh fruits and vegetables to start kind of breaking down, losing their nutrition. So if you can keep it closer to home and keep it seasonal, that's the best way to maximize the nutrition. And of course, if you don't have that option, buying frozen vegetables is actually a really good way to go too, because you know most of the time they're harvested and they're flash frozen to really lock in all of that nutrition. So if you can't get corn and zucchini if out of season, go to your frozen aisle and get some of that because it's going to still have that great nutrition content. Okay. I love that. And then let's talk about the salmon. Yes. I mean, it's one of my favorites oh, too. Yes. I love salmon so much. It's really one of those foods that's so great for heart health and bringing down inflammation. Salmon is one of the highest sources of the omega-3 fatty acids. So a certain type of fat that's really, really great for bringing down that inflammation, lowering cholesterol, uh, research has come out that these omega-3s have been really supportive of reducing anxiety and depression. So really great for mental health as well. And on top of that, salmon is a great source of vitamin D. And that's huge, not only for bone health and mood regulation, but especially for immunity. One of those nutrients you all really need to focus on right now. If you can even get your levels checked. I'm always telling people vitamin D is so critical. So salmon is one of the great ways to get that on your plate without necessarily having to rely on a supplement. And how often can we have the salmon? Because I would eat it every day if it was okay, but I'm not sure. How often? I would say two to three times a week is one of, that's the sweet spot to make sure you're getting enough of the omega-3 content from the fish without going overboard. Okay, good. And then, uh, Chef, I do have a question about the salmon for you. Sure. When you said sashimi grade, you taught me something about that and I can't remember. Like, give us a little bit more information about what that means when you see that. Uh, what's wonderful here about Calabi, again, that all our uh, seafood is sashimi grade. Uh, if anybody enjoys going to a sushi restaurant, and obviously you're having sashimi instead of a sushi roll, sashimi is obviously raw seafood. But to be classified as sashimi, it has to be the highest quality fish. It has to be from the cleanest water. It has to be tested and graded. Um, uh, and... So to be graded sashimi grade is called Ichiban number one or only the best. So when you have, uh, might go to your favorite restaurant and have a little tuna tartare appetizer or a little uh, sashimi tartare or a taki, something like that, um, and they are grading it as sashimi, it means it's only the highest quality. So the fact that this fish comes from such clean waters, it's such a high quality fish, lots of room to swim, uh, 
lots of room to move around. It's a healthy fish, sustainable fish, and only the best quality. So the sushi restaurants that name themselves Ichiban are rather smart, <laughs> right? I never thought of it that way, but that's a really good point. Uh, that the, it does seem like most of them are called Ichiban for sure. <laughs> okay, and then just one more thing here in terms of the sauce, mm -hmm. you know, so we do have the, the all the red from the peppers and the tomatoes, and what would you like to say yes, about that? Yes, so I love that we're making a sauce here ourselves. That's one of the simplest ways to really minimize all of the processed food. So instead of going to a store and buying something that has maybe a lot of gums and fillers and additives or super high in sodium, the things we don't really need, making this at home, using those fresh flavorful ingredients, specifically like the, the tomato and keeping that acidity and just brightening up the dish. Uh, tomatoes that are cooked in this recipe in particular really high in lycopene and cooking the tomatoes actually makes this more bioavailable for us. So those disease fighting, cancer fighting antioxidants maximize with the cooking of the tomatoes. And of course, bell pepper, a lot of people don't know this, but it's very high in vitamin C, actually more than oranges and strawberries and all of those delicious fruits. So if you want to get your vitamin C without too much sugar content, getting that bell pepper is a great way to go as well. Okay. And I'm sorry, but what is lycopene? <laughs> lycopene is an antioxidant. So really great at neutralizing, neutralizing free radicals. We want to make sure that that antioxidant content is coming into our diet on a daily basis. Not only are we exposed to things through, you know, household chemicals and exercise and pollution, we're constantly needing to keep our cells healthy by making sure we have antioxidants. So lycopene is one of those really, really, really great for cancer prevention. And now I know how to pronounce it because yes. I always said lysopene, I think. So, okay, good. Anything else you want to share or can we move on to the next course? I love, just love how colorful it is. We're getting yes. those so 30 different plants, you, got, you know, the herbs, the fresh flowers, the different vegetables and the sauce, the zucchini, the corn, so many plants on the plate right now. And what little flower did you put here, Chef? That is just a fuchsia. I can never say that word, fuchsia. You show microflower that are in right now. And the microflowers like this, they're actually edible. They're just a beautiful, like almost little berry taste to it. Uh, uh, the uh, tangerine actually has a nice little citrus flavor to the little microflower that we put on the watermelon, uh, cucumber, uh, tomato. I love it. I mean, Mother's Day, Mother's Day, Mother's Day. This Absolutely. is so good. Okay, shall we move on? We shall move on. If you ladies are ready, I'm ready. Ichiban. 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 Now, uh, the favorite part, actually, I wanted to back up for a second, too, to Nicole on the is vinegar and dressing and sauce, both white vinegar. In the, uh, in the gastrique, it is a white vinegar. In the uh, uh, Romescu, it's actually a sherry vinegar, an aged vinegar. So it, there is two distinction there, but it's a great question. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, and now to everybody's favorite part, it's uh, time for dessert. Uh, some of the things we do at Calavi are how do we make uh, uh, spa food fun, even when it's the dessert. So uh, they had come up with the concept of using avocados and some beautiful cocoa powder. We actually use the highest grade cocoa powder here. It's the Val Verona uh, cocoa powder. It's beautiful. It's uh, from Belgium. You just can't buy a better quality. And basically, we're going to take a little honey and syrup. We're going to take a little bit of olive oil. Wait, syrup or syrup? Syrup. 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 And we're going to take those honeys and syrups. Every day is a learning lesson. And a little vanilla. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to combine all these together, ladies. And we're going to take avocados, which we like to call the butter of the garden world. And we're going to add those honeys and syrup, syrups. <laughs> and uh, 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 vanilla, honey, and cinnamon. And we're gonna again, put all these together in our food processor. And we're actually gonna make a chocolate mousse. Mm. And if we didn't tell you that it was made of avocado, you would not know any better. Uh, one of the things I like to do, um, usually with this at home, if you're doing this at home, try using maybe just your little steak knife. I wouldn't use an eight inch chef's blade, but we like to go ahead and take the avocado, spin it right around the seed. And I've got my avocado there. I'm going to go ahead and give my pit uh, a quick little knock there so I can pull that right out. So we'll go ahead and we're going to get our uh, avocados pitted. Then I'll take a spoon and I'm literally just going to scoop it right out into my food processor. And then once we have the avocados scooped out of their shells, we're going to go ahead and add the cocoa powder 
the uh, maple syrup, <laughs> the honey, uh, the vanilla, the grapeseed oil, and the cinnamon, and we're going to process RoboCoo all these together until it makes a smooth uh, uh, chocolate, uh, dark uh, colored uh, puree, the chocolate mousse. And then once it out, what the fun part is, is we're going to go ahead, I happen to have a uh, uh, glass right here. And uh, once the chocolate mousse comes out, I'm going to go ahead and put it into a piping bag. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a little presentation a little presentation with my pastry bag here. And then I've got some Marcona almonds, which uh, if you've ever had Marcona almonds, they're easily regarded as the finest uh, almonds in the world. They come from Spain, they're beautiful. And we're gonna go ahead and just top our uh, chocolate avocado mousse with uh, just a few salted Marcona almonds. And again, just like that, that Great food doesn't have to be complex or too hard or too much. It can be simple as combining uh, uh, cocoa powder and avocados to make a chocolate mousse that makes a uh, memorable dinner really memorable and really exciting. Okay, so let's talk about, I know the RoboCoop is your favorite um, <laughs> tool for blending all of these things, but you can use a Vitamix mm -hmm. again or... If you have the handheld wands, the, uh, the little... Um, yeah, the, I forget what you call Which that. Which you make your you protein about. shakes with yeah. and stuff like that. The little hand wands. If you have, uh, if you have a little bullet that you might make uh, uh, the whipped cream with at home, right. a food processor or a blender, any machine that has the spinning blades in there, you can put, make sure your avocados are nice and ripe mm -hmm. so they don't uh, 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 damage your blade, but make sure they're nice and ripe. Then go ahead and, and again, you're just going to process it all together and uh, just uh, look for that nice, beautiful uh, black, uh, smooth texture, and it should be wonderful to eat. So talk to us, give us a little more information about, I know we're going to measure out the ingredients mm -hmm. based on the recipe. And do, do you put it all in at one time? Is there kind of a process in which you would put it in the food processor? One of the things that's really fun about this, and I think that everybody will enjoy, is there's really, when you do a lot of baked ingredients, you know, you combine your dry ingredients and combine your wet ingredients. One good thing about this particular recipe is it's put it all in there and then uh, turn on your machine. Super easy. It's really that easy. And uh, you can have fun with this. We had actually a few weeks back experimented, took our avocados, but instead of putting cocoa in there, we actually put raspberries in there and made a raspberry mousse mm -hmm. that came out really well. Uh, we haven't worked with any other fruit yet, but I'm sure if uh, when we try and experiment with some blueberries or peaches or papaya or mango. We can also make a, a, a puree or mousse with that also. So it's really a versatile uh, versatile dessert that you can have a lot of fun with. And again, no heavy work, no combining of ingredients, just put everything together and uh, turn on your uh, food processor. Okay, so I, I wanna let the person asking about the cookbook available in Canada, I'm checking on that for you, but uh, there is a question about refrigeration for this. So would you make this the mousse in advance, right? And, yeah. then, and then how do you refrigerate? And can you talk to us about the consistency again? Because I know sure. this is really nice and thick mm -hmm. and I've had it, it's absolutely amazing. And you, it's beautifully rich and creamy, but mm -hmm. can you talk to us about that? Yeah, absolutely. Again, the key being those avocados being a, a nice and ripe, like, like everything we do right in season, the height of taste and flavor makes such a difference. Once you get uh, your ingredients combined in there, you really want to go ahead and uh, go ahead and turn it on and uh, RoboCoo it, just run it for a minute and then pull it out and give it a taste. One of the best things about cooking is you get to taste what you're making and make sure it's sweet enough, it's cocoa enough, and just the right consistency. It shouldn't be so thick that it will ball up on you. It also shouldn't be so runny that you're kind of pouring it out of the container. It should be a nice smooth check texture. Now, one thing that's fun, again, using the recipe as a guideline, if you like it a little lighter, you can add a little more honey or a little more of the syrup to it. Uh, if you like it as thick as we made it here, uh, we like to refrigerate it. The chocolate avocado mousse just tastes a little better when it's chilled, uh, uh, but we love adding that flavor to it. Uh, then I like, you can also just use a spoon to put it into your dish with. We use the piping bag to look, make it look fancy, but it's really, uh, 
uh, how thick or thin you like it. It will hold for about three days if you keep it in the refrigerator. So it's a dessert you can enjoy again and again for sure. Okay, I love that. And so with the piping bag, that's mm -hmm. a good indication too, because if it's too thin, obviously it's just going to pour right out of that. Yeah. So you wouldn't want it to get, you can <laughs> test a little bit if you're not sure, if you're first time dealing with the piping bag mm -hmm. um, and test a little bit. And then, but yeah, we saw you do that. And then portion wise, something that I think a lot of people forget is that if you have the right nutrients and the right balance, and this is something that happens here at Calabi all the time, people are not hungry because they're getting that balance and they're eating the right portions. So let's talk about portions for a second and we'll move into the nutrition side of that as well. You know, that's a great point. I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, when I came to Calabi, um, I read as many articles as I could about it, as many different spas. I think what Calabi does is so unique and so wonderful. It's not about a restrictive diet. It's about portion control that you can't eat this. You can't eat that. We're not going to give you this. We're not going to give you that. Here it's about uh, nutritionally balanced food, but also portion control. Everything we do is based on your calorie counts. For instance, if you're right around 12 or 1500 calories a day on our meal plans, most of your proteins are going to be right around three and a half, four ounces. The desserts right around two and a half, three ounces. And then obviously the appetizers can vary, but all the meals combined and each uh, course combined to bring your uh, calorie count, keeping it low through portion control. That's really one of our big secrets. And I think Calabi does a wonderful job with it versus again, restrictive di dieting. It really is about portion control here. We want you to enjoy the food, uh, really look forward to each meal and after your workouts and after your treatments and uh, pampering, what's better than enjoying a good meal with good friends. Good, good friends, good food, the right portions and the right ingredients because you know here we are making a chocolate mousse with avocado and you're gonna feel satiated from the fats in that, right? So let's yes. talk about that a little bit. Yes. So I love that we've touched on the portion sizes because that's, you know, one of the things that people don't like when they're trying to eat healthy is maybe trying to reduce their sugar and dessert intake. But if you're keeping the portions manageable, like we do so beautifully here at Calabi, you can have your cake and eat it too. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and still enjoy. And, and using these wholesome ingredients like the avocado, which is so high in mono and polyunsaturated fats, those really heart healthy fats, great way to keep your blood sugar balanced. There's also the fiber content from the avocado and the nuts. So keeping the blood sugar balance, reducing those sugar cravings, because like you said, if we're getting the right nutrients and making sure our blood sugar levels are balanced, we're not going to be having those cravings right. and that urge to continually reach for the next little pick me up or little snack. So this is a great treat to have and enjoy and feel fully satisfied and know that you're getting a lot of nutrition. So beyond the avocado, having all those heart healthy fats and the fiber, um, it's also a great source of vitamin E. So important for our immune system, also really important for keeping our blood vessels healthy and able to do all of the functions we need them to. Um, another thing about this is the Kogo. Everyone loves chocolate and there are so many nutritional benefits to the chocolate. Um, all those polyphenols, the antioxidants, the flavanols, really, really heart healthy, great for lowering our blood pressure. And cocoa is also a great source of magnesium. And this is a nutrient so many of us tend to be deficient in. Magnesium is responsible for over 300 different reactions in the body. So you can imagine we're constantly running through it. It's also depleted by stress. So if anything's raising your cortisol during the day, you're running through your magnesium. We got to make sure we're getting the magnesium. So no chocolate. Go for chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the magnesium comes from the chocolate. So really, really great for helping to keep muscles relaxed, promote good sleep, reduce stress. This would be a great little snack to have after dinner, mm. help promote that relaxation and that satisfaction. Can't go wrong. Yeah, and when when I've had this, again, I, what I love is that I truly savor every bite because it's it's that perfect. It's so good. So you, you've got to try this. Please make it at home. And um, so, Chef, did you want to add anything? I see you bringing some flowers up for me. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, me, no, no. Uh, As everyone knows, chefs just love to show off, but we always think we can make it a little better and a little more. So we're going to go ahead and just garnish this again. And again, uh, one of the first things we learn at chef school is you eat with your eyes. So when we can make food and what's better than cooking uh, 
food uh, for ourselves. It always tastes better when we eat, but again, cooking for each other. It's such a wonderful thing uh, when you have a little wine, a little Frank Sinatra in the background mm -hmm. and wonderful food when you're eating nutritionally balanced food, but it's also fun food and visually to the eyes, you can't wait for the next course. This really is the funnest part about our cooking, what we do at Calabi. It's not about boring food, it's about fun food, uh, elegant food, and again, food well done. The Mr. and Mrs. Havens really gave me the mandate to really make uh, Calabi a world-class eating resort, and that's what we wanna do here. It doesn't have to be that tired old stuff all the time. It's really, we change our menus daily. We love to cook for the season. And again, when, when uh, uh, you get to have chocolate with it, that's the best part of all. Well, we have a few questions. I got to say hi to Marsha. Marsha, it's so good to see you. And thank you so much. Uh, she just chatted that this has been fantastic. And she wants to do it again. So that means we're going to have to do it again, guys. Okay. <laughs> so Marsha, uh, I also see a question about the calorie count for the mousse and, and actually the different dishes here. So yes. can you speak to that? I definitely can speak to that. So all together, this meal is going to be about 500 calories. So Looking at the first course, about 20 calories. Our main entree with the salmon is gonna be about 400 calories. And then our little dessert is about 70 calories. So really nourished, balancing plate, so many different colors, so many different plants, providing you a whole spectrum of different nutrients and only for 500 calories. Wow, I'm in. Me I'm too. in for that. Okay, did we find out about the cookbook in Canada yet? Can we ship it there? We don't think we can, but we'll keep checking on that. Maybe we can take her name down and get back to her. Okay, so we're gonna try, we're gonna try this. I wish we could share it with you guys, but I hope you're gonna make this. But just real quick, a reminder. So the cure is wonderful uh, with this dish, um, or you can do, we have our own wines for those of you that may not know. Obviously you can find something in your area, but these, you can purchase these from our uh, boutique that's on the website if you're interested. So a, a nice Sauvignon Blanc here. And then the uh, rosé that we had, we were thinking that that would be um, a great choice with this dish, right? Indeed, uh, with the salmon, with just the richness of the salmon, the Ora King salmon, so beautiful and so well done. And then the nice clean crispness of the rosé, the sharpness of it with the richness of the corn, the salmon, and then obviously that uh, macho or romesco sauce, you couldn't bear up better. This goes really well. The Calavi wines really go with our cuisine really well. We have a lot of fun with it. And as always, uh, what's better than good food? Uh, good friends and good wine. Good friends, good. And I do want to mention, so I am a chocolate lover and I love red wine with my chocolate. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to point these out over here. Um, obviously, you know, red wines oftentimes are with more robust meals, mm -hmm. but it does go well with chocolate and just wanted everyone to know that we do have some red wines available as well. Yeah, our, again, with our desserts and the way we pair them up and especially with the wines, because we are in California for sure. But uh, at the end of the night, as you said, the uh, uh, the mental, spiritual and physical benefits of the chocolate, but also a little red wine with that has absolutely got to be a, a great way to end the day. For 100%. Sure. Okay, we have a couple of questions. So thank you so much, Trish. Uh, she says she's loved this menu and presentation. Thank you. And do we do cooking classes? So while you're at Calvi, we do have uh, cooking classes here. We are also based on availability. We can do private cooking classes for you through Zoom. So we would just want you to check in with us and we would try to arrange that for you and your friends. Obviously there's time zones we have to think about and whatnot, but we would love to do that um, as well. So um, should we taste this? Is it I, time? I, I think it's I'm time. Dying. Like, <laughs> let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Okay. So while we're doing this, if anyone has more questions, please type them in the chat and we would love to answer your questions for you. And I'm just going to pass this down. Fantastic. Well, uh, I hope everyone knows the rule that the, the chef loves to be served. So uh, oh. I'm ready for somebody oh. to, uh, uh, to so. take us uh, and finish this up, this wonderful meal here at Calabi. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the class as much as we did. It was wonderful fun. And uh, hopefully you'll come out and see us soon and let us cook for you in person. Absolutely. And then also, I do want to mention, so some people have been asking, so all of these recipes did come from our, I, I got, I'm proud of this. And I didn't have anything to do with this cookbook, but I'm still super proud because I work here at Calvi and I believe we, this book has won some awards. Am I right about that? 
Yes, uh, it's absolutely been uh, one of the best cookbooks uh, I, I have ever worked with. Uh, I have over 400 cookbooks myself. I love cookbooks. When uh, Calabi first approached me about uh, becoming part of the team, I had to look for the cookbook first. Uh, it's a beautiful book, very personal book Mrs. Havens put together. Uh, it's actually a, what I call a lifetime book. If you have this book, this is all you'll need. Uh, the recipes, the format, the it's presentation. It's on my coffee table, actually. Uh, it, as it is online also. The format of the recipes, very clear and easy to follow, nothing too complex, and an award-winning book for sure. Okay, um, I do want to mention too, we have these lovely wine glasses. So if you're preparing for Mother's Day and you're mm -hmm. trying to get a nice place setting, mm -hmm. think about your glasses that you have and have a lovely card perhaps for Mother's Day, which I want to thank Claire. You can't see her, but she made this beautiful card. So thank you so much. Oh, we're getting some more comments that they love the book. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions that anyone has, let us know. And if you would like to see some other presentations, if you have ideas you're interested in, please reach out. Um, Claire, could you tell me the best email if someone wants to reach us? Uh, just marketing at calabi.com. Okay. She says marketing at calabi.com. That's C-A-L-A-V-I-E.com. Reach out to us, let us know what we can do for you and, and what you want to see, because that's that's what we're here for.